In this chapter, we will create a couple of new textures that use the built-in tools that come with Vectorworks and Renderworks. We will not import an image to make the new textures as we did in the previous chapter, but instead we will use some of the built-in capabilities that the program already has. So the first one will be a simple tile texture, that is to say a texture that depicts tiles. Very simple, and we will apply it to a couple of the walls that you see in this rendering in the background. So here we have the resource manager, top center. And again, the RenderWorks Textures drop-down box is the category that is selected here. We will right-click and then go to New RenderWorks Texture in the current file. And we will now in the Edit Texture dialog box, let's just call this new texture Tiles 1. And now we go to the Shaders area down below here, just as we did last time. And in the color category, we will click on the first drop down box and select tiles. And you can see in the preview window the default tile selection for this category. Now we will click on the edit button and we will change the settings as follows. The first one is pattern. So let's click on the drop down box and go to squares. You see there are many different categories here. Well, you can see a couple of the other ones. Okay, so let's just go to squares. Here are the squares. And now we will select the grout and tile colors. So the grout color we will choose remains black. And then the first tile color we will select will be one of our grays. Of course, you can choose your own for this exercise if you like. The color tile color number two will be, for this case, a very light gray. And tile color three, we'll just leave it as white, although I don't think it will show. Now, down here in the dimensions area of this dialog box, we want to determine what is the grout width in percent of the total image. So right now it's at five. We will click, we'll select 10. And the bevel width, which is a bevel on the edge of each tile between the tile and the grout, we will just put that at 1 in terms of 1%. You can see immediately the preview changed up here. And other than that, we leave the other settings as they are. Okay, so the grout color, well, let's go back. First, the pattern is squares. The grout color is black. Tile color 1, 2, and 3 the width of the grout as a percentage we, we set at 10 and the width of the bevel at the edge of each tile at only one percent everything else we leave the same click OK and now we need to set the size of the texture and if you remember from the last one when we imported a graphic image or an image file we set the size of the texture by clicking on the set by image bo uh, button down here but we don't do that when we create textures from scratch from within the program instead we will actually put a uh, dimension here and so for the purpose of this exercise let's just put in eight inches click tab and once again you can see the preview here uh, it's too small, so it only shows a fraction of our texture. So in the object size shown in the preview, let's just call that 24 inches. Now you can see what it looks like. We can also test some of the other ways of representing the texture. That looks nice. And then click OK. As soon as we've done that, we can see that the texture shows up in the resource manager. And now as a test, let's select this wall here. And in the Object Info palette, under the Render tab, let's select our texture. We go to Texture here, and now we can see immediately that the texture shows up. Let's go back for a second and take a look at what makes up this texture. Okay, so you can see that of the four different types of shaders that make up textures in general, 
We've only used one in this case. We have not used reflectivity, transparency, or bump. And the one that we did use, if we click on edit, these are the settings for this specific type of shader under color for tiles. Other types of shaders have different sets of settings. Now to understand what these actually mean and how they can be applied, take a look at the text that accompanies this chapter and this video because there is a list which explains all the different settings and what they stand for. Okay, now we'll proceed to the next texture. So now we're going to create a brick texture using the built-in tools. So once again we go up to the resource manager, right-click in the central panel, go create a new RenderWorks texture, and we will call that Bricks1. And we will we'll go now to the shaders that are directly underneath, and under Color we will select Bricks. And you can see something shows up here in the preview window. Don't get too concerned yet about what it looks like. And now let's click on Edit. And you can see the Edit Bricks Shader dialog box has four categories. The first one is Color. And under Color, the scale in percentage is 100. And we will leave that exactly as it is. The next category is bricks. And in this category we will go down one by one through these items. First we'll click on colors and select kind of a dark reddish color. And then the second color we'll select kind of a light brown. This is our combo for this texture. We are not choosing an image. And now let's go down here to these categories. Contrast percent, we will put at 10. Brick width, we will put at 8 inches. Brick height, we will put at 4 inches. Now these are fairly standard brick widths and heights for the United States market. They are 3.5 by 7, 3.5 by 8 inches. But in other countries that use imperial measurements, or that use metric measurements, rather, sorry, um, you may want to put in the relevant dimensions for your market of typical brick sizes. And those vary by country, so that's why I'm not putting them here. Now let's go to the next item down, shift percent. We will leave at 50. And half brick row, let's put in 10 and the half brick shift in percent we will leave as it is. All these settings are described in detail in the accompanying text in this chapter so do take a look at that and see what they mean and then alter these numbers accordingly. Now we will click on the next item here in the list which is gaps and this refers to the gaps between the bricks and over here we will once again go with the colors so let's select a light gray here and the second color will be black for this purpose again we're not choosing an image and if we go down here to size I'm just going to put 0.5 inches and under noise I'm going to put for this exercise 20 percent so these are the settings for this item and finally we will go we will go to the alt bricks item in this panel and you see that the arrangement of the controls is very similar to what we had before so we'll go to colors and select a gray and then in this case I'll select a dark bluish color a little bit for contrast again we don't choose an image we could choose an image to bring in if we wanted and under row we will put four Again, we're walking through the different steps to create this particular texture, but again, take a look at the text that accompanies this chapter and this video, and that will explain what all of these settings are. Now click OK. 
Now notice that the preview window here is showing us a small fraction of what we just created and that's because the object size is very small but if we change the object size to a different size then we will see a little bit better we should see a little bit better how this works let's see here yeah it just takes a little while to refresh so what we're seeing here is a field of bricks with the grout we just created and every four rows of bricks we have a row of bricks of a different color the next item we're going to look at, which is the next shader that helps to compose this texture. We have one already, which is color, and we selected bricks. And now we, we're going to go and select a uh, shader under the bump category. And the bump category is what creates the impression of three-dimensionality, like a rough material. This would be where, for example, the grout is a little recess from the front surface of the brick, as an example. So under bump, we click on the drop down box and once again go to bricks okay. and then click on edit to start editing the settings for bump we can see that the edit brick shader opens and in this case since we're dealing with bumps as the shader type the first item that appears here is not color but rather bumps so let's take a look at the settings for this particular texture. Uh, we will leave the first one scale at 100 and the strength, we want the strength of this bump to be 1000. And I'm putting in 1000 because I worked this out earlier, but you can try different kinds of numbers here. And then we will leave displacement mapping as it is. And as you will see in the accompanying text for this chapter, displacement mapping is an additional method to make this texture look three-dimensional. Next we'll go down, as we're going down this list on the left, we'll go down to bricks. And in the bricks category, we will select these settings. So the, the first brick height we will set is zero, and the next is 100, and this refers to the range of height for the, for the three-dimensional aspect of the brick that is being shown here. So if we have a, a spectrum that goes from zero height to 100 height, we want our texture to cover that whole spectrum and not only a small portion of it. And again, we will not choose an image in this case, but we'll go directly down to contrast, which we will set at zero. And then the brick width and height remain the same as before. It picked up the sizes from the last time. And then shift percent we will set at zero and then we go on to the next one which is half brick row which we also set at zero and then the half brick shift percent also at zero for this purpose so that's been the the data that we entered for the brick portion of the bump shader now we'll go down to gaps and we're going to control the three-dimensional aspect or visibility of the grout area between the bricks and we will set our settings to and the first and beginning we start with the gap heights and the first setting will be zero and you can see in the preview how a change occurs there and then the next one is 10 just for this exercise now we will go down to size and noise and in size we will leave it at half inch and, or if you don't have half inch, put one in there. And under noise, we will put zero. And again, please refer to the text that accompanies this chapter to see what all these settings are and exactly what they represent. And then finally, we'll go to the alternative bricks or alt bricks setting for the bump shader. And the settings for this, we'll, we will start at the top with the alt brick or alternative brick heights at... 0 to 100 because we want it to cover the full spectrum and then down below under row we will do 0 and under column 0 this is very similar to the to the color brick shader settings that we arranged before so just to repeat earlier we arranged similar settings to these for the bricks color shader and now we're setting these 
dimensions and settings for the bump shader and it's color and bump that make up the two shader types for this texture. So now we click OK and we're done creating the texture so we click OK. Bricks one here we see that the texture has shown up and let's drag and drop the texture onto this wall in this case and you see that it shows up uh, with a different dimension than we expect a little bit and that's because OpenGL in some instances depending with certain computers and so forth the dimension shown in an OpenGL rendering may be a little different than in RenderWorks so to see what it looks like in RenderWorks we'll go to view rendering and let's go to final quality RenderWorks and uh, right away we see that the texture shows up in the appropriate size